Okay guys, what's up? God Split here. Um, we're going to talk about a few things today. Some simple things that I want to talk about. Some things maybe that would help you with Nightmare. Maybe with your gear build. Uh, we'll talk about grinding to 110. An easier way I found to do it. We'll talk about the modifiers of Nightmare this week. And before we do that guys, if you wouldn't mind, just like and subscribe at the bottom. Leave your comments in the comment section. But let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so personally... There's a few things I believe you need in order to complete the nightmare this week. Now I'm talking about the story, not the survival. The survival has a modifier that's immune to all status effects, fire, poison, hallucination darts, and that's typically what I run. So instead of doing that this week, I decided I was going to run the story, try to get this helmet. As you can see, we wind up getting it, which is just getting all the bonus objectives in the nightmare this week. <clears throat> okay, let's look through my character real quick. The, the main thing, guys, I truly believe you can blow through it pretty easy and decent as long as you have a pretty coordinated um, individual that's playing with you, whoever you play with, co-op guys. If y'all tag the same guy that has that elemental resistance with that bow, it'll be real easy. And in case you guys don't know, it's Ichisini's, um stage. It's like the third stage. Matter of fact, we'll take a look at it real quick. And the story, fourth one, the Tale of Uchisini. It's a real easy one, in my opinion. It's one of the quicker ones. But let's look at the build. Okay, under my gear, the main thing you're going to see here that is very important this week is Shogun's Fortitude. And the reason being, if y'all look at that, grants immunity to flash and poison effects. Okay, this week on the modifier for the Nightmare Story Mode, they have poison clouds, toxic clouds, nonstop. Every time one dies, blow up and they run toxic. Now, do you have to have this to beat this? No, you don't. There are plenty of builds I'm sure that people can run through that that they've beat it without running this, but I promise you it makes the biggest difference having this one charm on. If you don't have it, guys, there's a grind for it. There's not a guaranteed drop anywhere. The RNG is completely random, as you know, but I've, I think I've gotten three of these so far. I've destroyed most of them just to get honor tokens. Um, I think I have the other charm I have in here is Sacred Iron. Uh, Shogun's Fortitude, though, back to that, is guaranteed something you need. It rolled good um, damage increase and it rolled fire damage. And as you know in my previous videos, I'm running a fire build. Now, everything else completely subjective, in my opinion. I do see a heavily or a big heavy amount of archers. We played through it probably 20 plus times running different builds, different scenarios just to see if anything changed up too much. But the one thing that stayed pretty much the same every time was the archers. So uh, my katana, I'm running normal katana. Now I know you guys probably wonder I'm assassin. I run really high melee stagger damage and stagger damage on most of my stats. I try to. I still have some with stealth. This is what Heaven Sting rolled the first time. Stealth attack damage and stealth, which is good because I'm an assassin. Hallucination darts. I want to talk about this just for a second in this build. Um, there's a segment in the second portion of the chapter on the Tale of Uchisini where there is a purple Oni. You know, the ones that's got the long pike that dashes, and then there's a white Oni. I typically go in and I hit the white Oni and the purple Oni with these hallucination darts. As you know, normally in the build, you only have two to three darts. I know I think I have three. So what I do is I shoot the purple Oni and then I'll shoot the white Oni and I let that group fight while I'm concentrating on the archers. And I'll eventually here soon guys, I'll put out a video for you guys can see it. Um, we beat it last night and I think, I think maybe 17 minutes, something like that. Didn't take very long, but we were working through different builds and we were checking out where the waves were spawning at individually toward the end of the chapter. So getting back to the build, guys. Okay, um, Ghost Weapon 1 and 2, subjective. You can use Kenji's Brew. If you're not running an Assassin, you do not have to use the Heavenly Sting. Or Heaven Sting. Uh, Kenji's Shared Brew, as long as you have Strong Brew on there, this really helps with helping allies, especially during that Poison Effect, if you do not have the Shogun's Fortitude Charm. Run Kenji's Brew. Uh, that heals you and your allies. And in case you guys don't know, as soon as you get hit with Toxin, you bend over, you start throwing up, you get really blurry, and it will not go away until you heal. Kenji's Brew helps dramatically because as long as you're nearby with your ally, you can pop that real quick, he'll buff you up and get back into the action. Although I do heavily lean and recommend Shogun's Fortitude, that way you don't even have to worry about the poison effects. 
Uh, Ghost Weapon 1, I use Dirt Throw because when I run fired up on Dirt Throw, it seems to hit three or four enemies at a time. Sometimes with an assassin, that gives me just the opportunity I need to hit them, get away for a second, especially if I need to heal up. I typically use it as soon as I run in. I'll throw it, hit them with fired up, catch them on fire, do a little damage, and back up, and then I'll prepare with my uh, my blow dart gun. Because even the base poison darts that you get from these stagger enemies, and of course, like I said, primarily I run a fire and stagger build. Even when I'm not running this katana, and I'm not running this blow dart, I normally run Masamu's Edge, which has melee attacks have a 20% chance to deal double damage, which works great. I run it dropped melee damage and counter damage, which was decent. Uh, Demon Cutter guys, the stagger that it has on there has stagger target has a 30% chance to be thrown nearby enemies. Why that works for my build predominantly when I do use it secondarily on some missions is because I run stagger. Now, as far as nightmare goes, guys. Shogun's Fortitude, really, if you want to make it easy, it's a must, no doubt. Ranged blow dart gun. As an assassin, this works for me because I get an opportunity to put people in a position where they fight each other while I can heal up. Now let's talk about something real quick. Uh, techniques, I'll run over real quick and make this as easy and simple as possible. Group Vanish, I'll tell you why. This helmet particularly that you get for the assassin, this mask, you can't get it unless y'all do all the bonus objectives for that mission. Now what I like to do, and I've shared this in previous videos, and I'll make a video on it soon enough, I do group vanish right before we open that chest. When we open that chest, we're both invisible, it gives us an opportunity to do a critical strike, and we both try to hit the same only at the same time to at least take one out of the equation. Okay, um, for an assassin, I'm running critical hit right now. It inflicts 30% more damage during assassinations because I primarily threw that until the boss wave at the end. I try to assassinate everybody I can. I'm running melee stagger damage because predominantly I like to be able to hack and slash in the event I need to. I see a lot of assassins just like to play assassins just because the masks are cool. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that, guys. Nothing wrong with that. So if you want to do a melee build over that, we'll go over that eventually in another video as well. Okay, opportunist, a must for me. I use stagger once again. This deals 50% more, more bonus assassination damage to a staggered enemy. That helps so much, guys, because that stacks very well with the fact that you staggered them with your blow dart gun. Um, very bottom, legendary. Obviously, I'll run that so I can pop two legendaries. Having Shogun Fortitude and that legendary blow dart gun makes a really big difference. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, guys, just to get off subject of the gear the grind to 110 a lot of people seem to think and just know right now i have gear selected on for nightmare but it's actually not 110 my predominant build i normally don't actually run this i normally run kenji's brew a blow dart gun which i do like using heaven stings but i run a 110 charm and then i run heaven sting now that's my 110 setup right there but listen guys, when you're grinding that gear to try to get to 110, or you're grinding your stages, your story, your survival, I'll give you a little uh, idea. Uh, typical survival on silver or gold lasts in between really quick, 32 minutes, maybe all the way up to 50. You get about, if you look in the middle, upper right hand corner right there, that's your honor. That 130 number right there, that is your honor. When you get gear, and you go to mod it and reforge, you can see there's a cost. Mine's pretty high right now because of my rank, it costs 110. When you get past 100, I start reforging the gear that I predominantly use and I like using, and every time I re or reforge it, it normally goes up one at a time. So if you look in perspective, a lot of people are thinking when they do nightmare instantly that you're gonna automatically get 110 gear. That's not how that works, guys. You can get 110 gear, but it's not a definitive drop unless you do the weekly challenge. There's always a weekly challenge under the story mode, and it'll tell you what that is if you look. Okay, complete nightmare story and all bonus objectives. Then you're guaranteed that 110 gear item, but you would not guarantee that if you don't complete that. A lot of times when I complete nightmares, I get 105s, 106s, even though my whole class setup is 110. I'll normally run in between 108 and 110. So what I'm getting at is, 
the easier, in my opinion, way to grind from that 100 mark to that 110, and I know some people think that's really slow, and it can be because it's a, it's an average based out on all your stat numbers on all your weapons. So what I like to do is I'll get a, we'll use this for an example. I would grab a blow dart gun. I would go to my modifications. I would reforge it. Okay, it went from, it went all the way up to 105, okay? That's, that's a good jump. What I'm getting at is it's easier for me to do that than constantly grind stages over and over again in hopes that I'll get something higher because you don't always. But it helps. I'm telling you guys, it helps. And it's much easier, in my opinion, to just reforge, 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 reforge. Yes, it takes materials. That's what the grind is for, guys. Um, I got to 110 really easy using this, using this technique. There's a lot of people that risk the RNG and constantly replaying story mode, replaying survival, and they're just not getting what they want. And I'm, I'm hearing that very frequently. A lot of people are asking me how I got to 110. So that's, that's how I do it, guys. Anytime I play a stage at the end, if there's something better I want to use, I will equip that, especially if it's of my level or a little bit above my level, and then I will just reforge it. Individual items, by the way, like this kunai right here. I got this from Nightmare last night. That ran at 105. But if I wanted that to be 110, I would just re-roll it, uh, assuming that I had the all the the costs that I needed. I would re-roll that until I got it to 110. You're almost guaranteed after a certain degree when you get it to legendary or even epic. Every time I've ever rolled something, it never went down. It always went up. And it always it normally goes up just one at a time. But I have had them go up three or four at a time. Just like it did with that blow dart gun. It went from 101, I think, to, yeah, 105. And that's an easy, easy way, in my opinion, to get stats up higher instead of trying to constantly grind in hopes and dreams that you might get a 110 item. There's only one thing that's definitively going to I give you a 110 item, and that's that nightmare story mode bonus objective or just complete the nightmare, the nightmare survival. So that's just my technique, guys. Please, by all means, leave your comments. If you got any ideas, any concerns, any anything else to throw in there, just leave your comments below in the comment section. Okay, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is just the Nightmare Week modifiers, guys. Keep a keep a guy on your modifier, like a good a good view on it. And I tell this to people um, because, truth be told, I didn't realize this the immunity in that upper right hand corner. I literally just clicked Weekly Survival and ran at it, and I couldn't figure out why my way of the flame was not doing anything. I was still placing barrels, because I, I believe it's in the village this week. I was placing barrels, nobody was catching on fire. I thought that was a glitch. I was looking through the error codes and everything online, and I just found out that it was something very simple. It wasn't complex at all. I just didn't pay attention to the modifier. But guys, they make a big difference. And I understand the builds that I've done in a previous video won't necessarily work with the survival this week because it's more of an elemental fire build so we'll work around that eventually and i'll post a video about that but guys just keep a heads up uh check your modifiers it makes a huge difference that's another reason why it's a good idea to practice and run different builds non-stop as much as you can uh every week is going to change and as you guys know the raids come out on the 30th of october that's next friday so uh, by all means have your builds correct have your builds ready the road to 110 is just right around the corner as long as you run through those techniques I was talking about earlier. And guys, if you that's all I got to say. If you like, if you like the video and you want me to produce more videos, just let me know. Like and subscribe by all means, please. Thank you. It helps out in any way. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Ready?